This video is an introduction about using PyMol for our project on the assignment of function for proteins with unknown function. My purpose is simply to show you a few features of PyMol that will make it easier for you to use the program. In future videos, we will look at specific tools within PyMol or associated with PyMol that will help you predict protein function and identify potential substrate molecules. We start with simply opening PyMol. As I open PyMol, I should mention that I'm in the Macintosh operating system. And so this is what PyMol looks like on the Mac. It'll be slightly different in Windows and Linux, uh, but much the same. And one of the key things in the Mac is when you open PyMol, to be able to use all the tools that we have, you also need to have something called XQuartz opened up. Uh, and XQuartz is something you can find to download. And in fact, when you try to install PyMol on your computer, if you have a Mac, it will probably tell you you need to download XQuartz. The reason we need XQuartz is that the version of PyMol for the Mac that accesses plugins only works if you have uh, something called X11 installed, and XQuartz is the latest version of that. So if I want to use plugins, and I will, in this particular case I have the Promol plugin attached here uh, and functioning, in order to use that I have to have XQuartz attached. So if we look at PyMol, the bottom window here is the molecular viewing window. And so the molecules will show up here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side is what we call the internal graphical user interface. And we'll use that some a little bit later. The top is a separate window. I can move it around here. And this is actually the external graphical user interface. Whenever you use PyMol, if you're using uh, PyMol to visualize something and, and the view becomes very strange for any reason, you can always go under the File Input menu and select Reinitialize, and that will simply uh, take whatever you've done, get rid of it, and you can uh, start over. And if we look at PyMol in the, uh, the external user interface, there, there's a window here where you can enter Python commands. Now, I'm not going to try to teach you Python here. You can learn that if you're really interested. But there are a few simple commands that we can use. And I'm going to use a particular command to bring in a protein. Now the protein that I want to bring in is found on the protein data bank. So I'm going to look it up. <clears throat> and I'm particularly interested in looking at a version of HIV protease that contains an inhibitor called sequinavir. And so there are actually 50 structures that the PDB finds for that. And the one that I want is actually this first one, 3OXC. We'll come back to this window in a few minutes. So I go in here to the command line, and I simply type in fetch 3OXC. And you'll notice that there's, a there's sometimes a delay when you enter commands in PyMol. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is the nature of PyMol, the nature of custom-created software, uh, but in any case, uh, it, the command finally appeared. And that's a view of the structure of, uh, pi of this protein. This is HIV protease with the drug molecule sequinavir bound to it. And this is just a, a stick structure. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you some commands that will enable you to use uh, this structure a little more effectively. Uh, and so... Uh, if we look at the internal graphical user interface, there's a line here that says 3OXC, 1 of 1. And there are different commands or different buttons here. The H button is for hide. So if I click on the H button and I go down to waters, I first look at the structure and notice that we have a lot of little dots all around the structure. Those little dots represent waters. If I click hide waters, they go away. And the next thing I'm going to do is click the S here for show. I'm going to show cartoon. So this shows the HIV protease as a cartoon, but you still have <clears throat> all of the, the lines and sticks from the backbone of the protein in the side chains. So I'm going to hide those. So I'm going to hide sticks and lines. And now all we see is a cartoon representation of HIV protease. And you can obviously you can rotate that in the PyMol interface. Now I also want to show the inhibitor. 
So what I'm going to do next is I'll click on this S button, which enables me to select things on the protein. When I click S, it brings up this uh, viewer on top of the molecular viewer window. Uh, and here we see it identifies the protein as 3-OXC, chain A, and residue 1 is a P for proline, residue 6 is a W for tryptophan. I can scroll along here, and I get to the end of the amino acid chain at LNF, and then I have three other molecules here, uh, 401, 801, and 803, and 401 is ROC, which is an abbreviation for the molecule sequinavir. And now I want to show that as sticks, and so I just did. And so now you can see that structure of the inhibitor that's in the middle of the active site of this protein. Now, right now, that's what's selected. And so if I, if I want to change the view of that, let's say I want to make it space fill, I can say show space or show spheres. And it comes up looking like that. And if I, I can hide the spheres, and it goes away. You can also show uh, dots, which is kind of a nice semi-transparent version uh, where you can, if you zoom in, or you can see the bonds on the inside. But I'm going to hide the dots as well. So those are a few simple commands you can use to visualize the molecule you're working with. Now, how did I know to look for ROC as the inhibitor in the middle of that structure? Well, let's bring up the PDB webpage. So now I'm on the PDB website, www.rcsb.org. And I found the protein 3-OXC. Once again, I did a search here, and I searched for HIV protease sequinavir. When I did that, this was the top hit. So if I click on this link, this brings me to the site for the structure, 3-OXC. And the question is, how do I know what they call the inhibitor in this structure? The typical three-letter abbreviations. I expected it to be SAQ, but it wasn't. And if I scroll down the page, then I find some information here. It tells me that the molecule is a protease. And then it tells me about the ligands, the small molecules that are bound here. So FMT is formic acid. And it's shown here, ROC is actually, uh, this is the chemical name for it. Here's a picture of the structure. And uh, I'm highlighting right here, sequinavir is the trade name for that molecule. I know to look for ROC in pymol when I use a selection tool. So now we have our structure. We might want to take some pictures of the structure. Okay, and the way you can do that is you can just do save molecule, or you could say save image as, as a ping, and it's just going to save it. Now I'm going to save it actually to my desktop, just so it's easy to find. And I'll say HIV protease with sequinavir. And it saved it there. And if I double click on it, it just comes up here in a window for preview on the Mac. So those are a few simple tools that will help you get around the interface in Pymol. Uh, the last thing I should mention once again is the plugin menu. And so this is what we use to gain access to our plugins. The plugin that we're using, Promol, enables us to do alignments between query structures. These are proteins of unknown function and proteins with a known function that are found in our library. And in fact, the alignment is actually with the active sites of those proteins. That marks the end of this video. And there will be other videos with more depth on using Promol, on using the Protein Data Bank, and on using the other tools that are part of this project.